to a real episode. Yeah. Uh, and if, for anybody listening, don't worry. It won't, it won't be like this. This is actually... I yeah. decided not to get involved with it and explain my screwed up life, which led me to just hating your cult. But um, right. right. If I could do it, year, anybody can. Because the first year, I loved the cult. I wanted to be a part of the cult. Um, I chased... Uh, her. And that's probably why you're still sober today. Uh, yeah, because I chased her. I had the right him. I bought into the cult. I had the right people around me. And that's it. I mean, ultimately, if you look at anybody's first successful year, they chased a her. They followed the him. They went to meetings. They rinse, repeat. And you try to squeeze in a job. If you're in your 20s, you're just trying to squeeze in a job. If you're a teenager, I don't even know. I really don't know how you get sober school. as a teenager. School is I don't. Your job. I don't. I don't even have advice for school somebody who's a job. teenager trying to get sober. Like, calm down. Go to school. Go to school. Calm down. Yeah. You're just going through a bad phase. Now, at 21, if you're still drinking and using and you got a problem, then yeah, I, I, I don't. I've never sponsored anybody below their 20s, so I don't even know what that nutshell looks like. But being in my 20s. I, I have a unique perspective on sobriety uh, because I was quote unquote, what was it the old timers would say? You're too young to get sober. Oh, yeah. I hate that. I hate that. Your sober. hair's too long. Yeah, whatever. Get, get rid of the leather pants and put on a, a button up and, mouth. and, and you can't tie. share at the meetings. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what? You don't know shit. And you're old and you're angry. Yeah. And I don't want what you Bitter. have. I would Bitter. love to go back. And turn around and bitter go, and brittle. A bitter and brittle. Could you imagine being in your first year and looking at those people, going, "You're fucking old and angry. I don't want a fucking thing you have. Go write about it. <laughs> go beat a sponsor." I, <laughs> I've said this. I am fascinated with some of the shit bags that sponsor people and, like, literally allow their fucked up shit to become a sponsee's fucked up shit. Yeah. Like they are literally passing on bad evil shit to another generation and they don't care they don't care they don't care and then that generation who's fucked up mental insecure neurotic like fuck and they sponsor people like they're like do people get the responsibility do they even remotely understand the responsibility level of getting someone sober that it's literally life and death I do. So you have to take all your shit out of the equation and strictly stick to the book. Like, in the first year, that would have been really fucking helpful. Really fucking helpful. Instead of, I don't want to hear your opinion. I don't want to hear about your life. I don't really care about you as a human being as my sponsor. I mean, I'm just being perfectly honest. You're going to fall into a father or mother role no matter who I am. But that's right. going to happen. I'm fucked up. I'm probably fucked up because of my family. I'm drinking and I'm using to get away from how I feel about my family, right? F real or imagined. And right. I'm not even I'm not even here to dive into that part of that. Right. And now I got a sponsor who's passing their fucked up shit on to me. I get a year or two sober and I still wet behind the nose and ears and they're telling me to go sponsor other people. How fucked up like I want everybody listening to this to take a mental step back, okay? Hopefully you have a drug relapse of some kind and you're like, fuck, he speaks the truth or I'm having a flashback. Whatever. Think about why people relapse. I'm going to put it directly on people not being able to sponsor correctly. It's not the meetings. It's not the fellowship. It's not. Nobody wants somebody else to go... I strictly think it's about people getting bad sponsors in that first year that fucked them up. Like you're lucky yeah. you got a home run. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I did. Absolutely. And that's why he's, and I got lucky there. and I got a guy who was first run home run. Like I mean, I'm my able... NA sponsors doing life in prison, right? Yeah. He joined the wrong motorcycle game, but you got lucky. He didn't put any of his bad shit on you. He just did what he had to do to get you sober. No, and he could have learned from me, and he'd probably be uh, free walking around right now. But. Right. But that's what I mean. Most people yeah. don't take the time to remove the self from the sponsorship. Mm -hmm. uh, 
for those wondering, I'm what's called a one-hit wonder in the business. I stopped drinking and using the very first time, and I did it for the rest of my life to this point. Yes, I don't go to meetings, so therefore I can't qualify in your cult, and I don't take cakes anymore because I just think it's too hypocritical. That's fine. But what I am saying is the first person I followed was a one-hit wonder as well. And Aren't you coming up on an anniversary? Uh, yeah, it's September 23rd. Uh, 1993. It's yeah, that's a me too. Mine, mine's the 11th. 24. 24 is a lot. Somebody said this the other day. What do you like? It's like a running joke at my jujitsu place. Like, how many years has it been? Uh, tw- it's going to be 24. It's 24. So it's a lot of years. It's a lot of years. It's a lot of hours. It's um. By the way, it's so long that at this point, I do think I need a drink. Um, <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, I, I need well, to reward myself. Well, we know myself. what the topic of next week's episode will right. be. Right. Well, what would I... Getting sober after going out after 23 years. After 23... Well, I don't know. I could have won the lottery last night. What was that? $550 million? Did somebody win? I don't know. But if I win... Neither do I, and I didn't buy tickets, so I figure I saved six bucks. Wait, I'm going to tell you this. If I do hit $550 million... I'll write to Columbia, and you're taking me with. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm already booking. I'm already booking Betty Ford before I leave for Vegas. Right, right. <laughs> what happened in Vegas? It was a great weekend. It yes. was a really good weekend. I yeah. managed to break all my relationships, get my 13 year old daughter never to speak to me again, and lions yes. and hookers. And five America. of us went out there, and only two lived. And to only tell two the story. lived the tale. Right. <laughs> the death rule was in effect. Here's the problem with the death rule in Vegas. If you guys don't know, uh, go listen to previous episodes. I've had a death rule on many a party uh, party outing. The death rule is awesome, which was in Cabo San Lucas where we almost OD'd a guy on Percocet. Uh, Every day we were popping Percocet and mushrooms and drinking beer in Cabo San Lucas and never leaving our room. We watched HBO. So that's back in 91... So that was a big deal. Hey, look, going on vacation to a tropical location, uh, drinking beer, popping Percocet on demand because it was at the local pharmacia. There were people passed out. Like, you had to check people. There were five of us who went on the trip. You had to check people for a pulse. So at one point, I had my wits about me after coming down off a lot of cocaine and said, hey, look, if any of you assholes die, I'm buying some uh, como se dice concrete and putting you into the bay and then going to the embassy and going home. I'm not doing time because you couldn't handle your high in, in Cabo. Yeah. With me, it was a shopping cart through the ER doors to the hospital next to the hotel we just trashed. Just push them in. Just push them in. Yeah, that's, well, that's that's what they did. That's what they did for me. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad the show made a radical turn there at the end. Go to Black and White Recovery. (laughs) It was getting too programmed for me in this room. Uh, You will not find me on any 12-step forum, although you will see my name posting this podcast because I need those people to calm down too. If you're in a recovery 12-step group and you see this and you listen to it and you start writing negative things about this show, I would just love to know what we said that bothered you. Just go to Black White. Yeah, get rid of that resentment. Yeah, get rid of it. Write to us. Write it down. Send it to us. Yeah, black, white recovery. Three words, black, white recovery. Don't bother your sponsor. Just send it to us. At Gmail. Simple as that. If you want to listen to the podcast, black and white recovery, if you sign up on iHeart, it does something super cool. Most people don't know this, and this is why I push iHeart over all the others. First of all, they got an app. Second of all, it works for Android and iPhones and PCs. Um, And I even think they have iHeart in cars now. So everybody can listen to the show. Uh, But what is great, once you sign up for iHeart Radio and you like the show, they will actually send you an email and notify you when the next show is available. We try to record them on Sundays. It works out. um, Ian is already setting me up to let me know that football starts in a couple of weeks. And I agree. Uh, Now that I have two football teams, I went from no football teams in L.A. to two football teams in L.A. Go figure. One of them really sucks donkey balls, but I don't, you know. Are the Chargers playing there this year or no? No, we are. they are at StubHub. 30,000, 27,000-seat venue, the smallest in the NFL. So guess what? When the, I Like, I couldn't try to throw my money at season seats quick enough. Right. And the minute I thought about buying season seats, 
they were already sold out. Right. They're actually excited because they will. Be, they actually believe that they will have nothing but um, uh, Charger fans at their games for the first time. I said, no, Raider fans will still figure out how to get in there. They will. They they just will. I just know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably Raider fans that gobbled up all the season tickets. The, all 27,000 seats for every <laughs> yeah, single game. Yeah, all 27,000, so nobody can go, go to their game. The one game. The only game that would be they actually had people in it would be when they came to town. That, that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> now, they're not moving to Vegas for a couple of years, right? Uh, about four or five. Oh, okay. One of the co-hosts from Fight Net Radio, cross-promotion opportunity. Listen to Fight Net Radio if you like boxing or MMA. All you got to do is type in fightnetradio.com. And guess what? iHeartRadio. So, Speaking of uh, Fight Net Radio, yeah. what uh, what do you think of uh, the, the debacle next week? Uh, I'm going to Vegas for the debacle, uh, which yeah. will probably be the topic of this show next week, which is going to Vegas while you're sober. All right. I have a lot to say on that topic. In fact, one of the reasons I'm sober mm-hmm is because I went to Vegas and gambled with no in my no? first 90 days no I guess I had six months the first time I went I had about six months and it was on for the very first time and it happened in Vegas now I am not a believer in the light switch theory of uh, zombie like mode of I have to go do drugs and I have to go drink it's happened to me one time and it happened to me in Vegas and I encountered my... Wait, I'm going to talk real program here for a minute. Don't hold it against me. I encountered my first angel in Vegas, and he turned the switch off within seconds and sort of became my Vegas sponsee so that I could go to Vegas. Cool. Yeah, that'll be a good story next week. Um, But to answer your question about the debacle... You know, I'm going out there for a Grand Prix to watch a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Grand Prix that's happening on Saturday first, and then I'm watch, watch or participate. No, I'm not. I'm not competing in this one. Thank God. Okay. Um, these are actually the guys above me. Thank, thank God. These are the real legit Brazilian killers. Guys in their twenties and thirties. Yeah. Okay. The I'm fascinated with this fight. I'm literally fascinated with this fight beyond words. I think that the first four rounds are the whole fight. And then after the first four rounds, if Floyd hasn't been hurt, cut, slowed down, broken toe, stubbed toe, slipped on his stool and was taken out, you know, by hitting his head on the stool, the next eight are all Floyd trying to knock out, right, um, Conor McGregor. But the first four rounds are really interesting. That's what I think. I th- I think Connor's going to get frustrated, kick him in the head, knock him down on the campus, and get right, the, take the DK. canvas and get disqualified. Right, and we've discussed that. I, I'd like to bet a disqualification. You don't have to. That would this. be a winner by uh, DQ or knockout. Like stop. That stop. Yeah, it. but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not laying. You know, one to five. Oh, no, one to six. No, don't take the money. No, you take the money. Uh, you take the unders. I, w- I want to find a disqualification. I like it. Yeah, good luck. It's got to be three to one. Good luck. You would think it's not. <laughs> um, there's draw money. There's no DQ money on this fight. This fight will have a winner. Con- it'll be winner Floyd Mayweather by disqualification, which will be considered uh, a knockout or a TKO. Right. I just don't know how long it takes before Connor loses his shit and throws an elbow. And that right. will happen. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's going to get frustrated and yeah. do something stu- silly that will get him disqualified. The trick is trying to figure out when. Yeah. Right, right. R- which round? Right. I like four-round theory. That's the whole game. Has there been a Mayweather fight lately that hasn't gone the distance? No. I mean, if you're really betting the fight, you bet with the trend, right? And the trend for the last, uh, I don't know, ten fights for Floyd are are all twelve round decisions, so right. you'd be a fool not to bet. Right. Yeah, round the over under is always eleven and a half rounds. Yeah, right. So uh, it's actually shorter on this one. I think there's a shorter over under because right. they're expecting it, but right. the re- because they actually think Floyd can knock him out. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you lay off if you can get close to even money taking a Floyd Mayweather decision. I think you have to take that. But that's just betting with the trend. I can't believe we're doing betting on a show with people. I know. I was just thinking the same thing. We've covered betting. We've covered crime. We've covered dealing. We've covered drugs. 
Well, so okay, next week's show will be about feel, sex? It's starting to feel like a regular show, but it, it was way more pro.